So we're here at the wood shop this morning and I've got here a piece of black walnut. I know what you guys are thinking, like where did you get this beautiful piece of black walnut? So we don't have any black walnut trees down here in central Florida. And we ended up finding a company called Third Coast Hardwoods. They're located in Bradenton, Florida, and they actually have a sawmill and a kiln up in Michigan where they cut lots of black walnut, they kiln dry it, and they ship it down here to, to Bradenton, Florida, where they sell the slabs for very good prices. So I got in contact with them, and after a little back and forth of messaging, we were able to get 15 beautiful black walnut slabs. These slabs are just under an inch thick, so they're gonna be the perfect size for making cutting boards and charcuterie boards and all kinds of really cool projects. So today, I'm gonna to take this four foot piece of black walnut, I'm gonna cut it down to about 18 to 20 inches, and I'm gonna make an epoxy river table out of it, kind of like we've done in the past, and I think I'm gonna include the shell casings and maybe even something else. I'm really excited to work with black walnut. It's really nice that we actually have some kiln dried black walnut slabs to make these projects with. So I'm gonna get this measured out and cut down to size. For this project, we're gonna be using the silicone mold from Crafted Elements. This is the 18 by nine mold. So these molds from Crafted Elements are absolutely incredible. It is the easiest way to make epoxy projects. You don't have to worry about making a form and then having your epoxy leak out if you didn't seal it correctly. With these silicone molds, you just cut your piece to size, put it in there, pour in the epoxy, you have nothing to worry about. And the best part is at the end, you can just take this flexible silicone mold and you just peel it away from the epoxy project. It's really nice to have these. Triple L Rustic Designs is partnered with Crafted Elements. So if you go to purchase one of these silicone molds, make sure you use our discount code, Triple L 10. It helps us keep track of who's purchasing molds from watching our videos, and it also gives you $10 off your purchase. So like I said, this mold is 18 by nine, so we're gonna get this black walnut slab cut down to size. I'm gonna cut it just a hair over 18 to make sure it fits perfectly in the mold. And since these slabs have the live edge and they're not like perfectly symmetrical, I'm just measuring 18 inches out from both sides of the end. Now we'll use our speed square to draw a nice straight line. Now what I'll do is I'll take my mold and I'll just kind of butt the end up to the inside of the mold and check my line and it's almost perfect. So we'll go cut this down and get it placed in the mold. Now I'll just take this leftover piece of black walnut and I'll go put it back on the pile. So there's our piece, it looks really nice. Now we've gotta get all this bark off the live edges. So now we'll come over here to this little stand that we've got that clamps things down pretty well. And so I don't damage the black walnut slab, I'm gonna take two little scrap pieces of wood that I'll put on either side, and then I'll clamp the black walnut slab in between those pieces of wood. Okay, got that clamped down nice and tight. So now we need to get all this live edge bark off the slab, and if you have a draw knife, that is the perfect tool for it, but I'm just gonna use this little scraper because I don't have a draw knife. So I'm just gonna take the scraper and I'm gonna work my way along the live edge, scraping off all that bark material. As you can see, it pops off pretty easy. Um, if you had a draw knife, that's why it would work even better because the draw knife is probably gonna be a lot sharper than this scraper.
All right, that's pretty good. We'll get the rest with the sander. So now we'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. I got most of that bark off in one pass. If you get up under it perfectly, it just comes off super easy. Now, while we have it here in the vise, I'll just grab the sander and we'll sand up the little bit that's left, get it nice and scuffed up so the epoxy will bond to it nicely. So I've got some 60 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna scuff up these live edges. We got all that bark live edge material off. We're down to the bare wood, so now we'll flip it over, finish the other side, and then we'll keep going. So we've got all that bark material off the live edge and it's just down to bare wood now. So that epoxy will get a good bond with that wood. The next thing we need to do is draw a line down the center of this thing and split it with the track saw. And that way we'll be able to flip those two pieces around and pour the river between the live edges. As you can see, we've got a very nice fit into the crafted elements mold. So like I said, we'll just be drawing a line here and cutting it with the track saw. And that way we'll flip these two live edges on the inside and pour the river right through here. So you can see we've got our slab cut down into two pieces. So we'll take the one straight edge, put it against the one side. And we'll take the other straight edge, put it against the other side. And there you go, that's our river table. So this looks great. Um, it's the perfect thickness for the river to include some shell casings. So I'll get those ready and we'll get the mold and everything ready and then we'll figure out what color we're gonna pour. Before we get started, I'm just gonna sand these markings off. Even though we're gonna sand this whole thing in the end, I just don't want this purple R on the project the whole time we're working with it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna spray some epoxy mold release spray in this silicone mold. It's not necessarily needed, but it helps prolong the life of the silicone molds. And when we do this, we're gonna get away from all of our project area because you don't want this spray getting on your wood and then the epoxy doesn't stick to the wood properly. So we'll shake this up real good. We'll take our mold over here away from the project and we're just gonna spray it with a nice light spray. All right, we'll let that dry pretty much dries instantly, but we'll just let it dry for a little bit. While that's drying, we'll go ahead and mix up our epoxy. So today we're gonna to be using the ice epoxy one-to-one -one mix ratio. This is the ice thin epoxy. 
So what I'm hoping to do is use this thin casting epoxy and add some silver color to it, pour a nice thin layer, add some really cool designs, and then after that starts to get tacky, we'll put in our shell casings and then pour the clear layer over top of that. So like I said, this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. So I'm just gonna pour, for this thin layer, I'm probably gonna pour like eight ounces total. So four ounces of part A and four ounces of part B. I'm definitely gonna need more than that. So we're gonna go ahead and bump it up to about five ounces. Uh, let's go eight ounces because that's where the line is. So we'll go eight ounces of part A and eight ounces of part B. All right, so that was part A. Now let's pour eight ounces of part B. Now we're gonna go ahead and start mixing part A and B together. Um, when you're mixing, you wanna do a slow, a slow speed so you don't cause the epoxy to heat up and start curing already. All right, so we've got our A and B mixture mixed up thoroughly. It's time to add some pigment and we'll go ahead and mix that in as well. Okay, we have our epoxy color all mixed in. We're gonna let that sit for a second while the bubbles start to rise. We're gonna get our project set in the mold and weighed down so we can pour this first layer of colored epoxy. I've got some little pieces of HDPE. I use that to put on top of the wood and then put the weights on top of that because the epoxy doesn't stick to this. It kind of sticks, but it pops off real easy at the end. All right, we've got our project in the crafted element silicone form. We've got the boards weighed down with these weights. It's time to pour our ice epoxy in the project and let it set for that first layer. While we're letting that first layer of colored epoxy set up in the mold, we're gonna break out some shell casings. And an issue that I've run into in the past is that when I use the hollow shell casings, as it creates an exothermic reaction in the epoxy, it creates bubbles inside the shell casings. So what I'm gonna do differently this time is I'm gonna take the shell casings, I'm gonna set them up, and then I'm gonna fill them with hot glue. I think the hot glue gun will get rid of the bubble situation and I think the epoxy will bond to the shell casings just fine. So I've got a container here full of shell casings that I've already cleaned. These are all shell casings that Zoe and I have used while training here in the farm. So they've got a light coat of oil on them to keep them from becoming like oxidized again. So I'm just going to wipe that oil off and I'm gonna start stacking them up. And I'm thinking for this project, we'll use a mixture of 5.56 shell casings, nine millimeter shell casings, 
And I still think I may include a special little feature to this. All right, so I'm hoping that thin casting ice epoxy will start to set up here in a little while. And while we're waiting for that, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna fill the shell casings with a hot glue gun. And that way there won't be any voids that create bubbles inside the clear epoxy when we go to pour the clear epoxy layer. So right now the hot glue gun is heating up. Once it's ready, we're gonna take all the little shell casings and we're gonna fill them full of hot glue and completely fill the void on the inside. All right, it looks like the hot glue gun is heated up, so we're gonna start filling these things up. So we filled some of the shell casings with the hot glue. The epoxy is already starting to get thicker. That's what's nice about that one-to-one -one mix ratio. It starts to set up a lot faster than the deep pour epoxy. So I'm, I'm steadily trying to swirl some designs in that. And I'm gonna fill the rest of these shell casings with some leftover epoxy that I just poured in there. And hopefully it sets up. I know it won't set up as fast as the hot glue, but hopefully it sets up pretty quick. That way all these shell casings will no longer have the hollow inside. And when we put them in, no bubbles will come out into the clear epoxy. That first layer of silver gray ice epoxy is almost fully hard. It's been close to an hour now since I poured that first layer. And that's what's really nice about this ice thin casting epoxy. You've got about a 45 minute working time, but it really locks in those swirls very well compared to the deep casting epoxy. The deep casting epoxy, you could possibly trap in the swirls and the designs, but you'd be having to monitor it for like six to eight hours. So we used the thin casting epoxy, poured a nice thin layer with the ice epoxy silver gray ice color. Got some beautiful swirls locked in. We're letting it set up now. So we've got all of our shell casings full of hot glue and epoxy. That filled the voids on the inside of the shell casing. So that way when we put them down on this first layer of epoxy and then pour the clear layer over top of them, the clear layer isn't gonna seep into the shell casings and cause bubbles to come out and get trapped in the clear epoxy. So once this first layer of epoxy is hard enough that we can set these shell casings on them and they don't sink down in, we'll put a whole bunch of shell casings in there and then we're also going to put these SWAT coins. I know a couple of guys at the local agency on the SWAT team that have been asking for one of these shell casing charcuterie boards so they gave me a couple of their coins and I'm gonna incorporate their SWAT coins along with the shell casings in this black walnut charcuterie board. That first layer of gray epoxy with the swirls in it is set up nicely. I kind of missed the window of opportunity where I could have placed the shell casings in there and they would have been stuck in the epoxy that was still sticky. This thin casting ice epoxy sets up so fast that it's hard to gauge that window of opportunity. That's okay though, I'm just gonna take the shell casings, I'm gonna apply a little bit of this Starbond CA glue, and I'm gonna glue them down in the epoxy river, and then that way when I pour the clear layer of epoxy over top, they won't float around or move or anything. Let's go ahead and get these shell casings and the SWAT coins put into this charcuterie board, and after that, then we'll pour that clear layer of epoxy over top of them.
think they look good. As you can see, we've got all the shell casings and the SWAT coins placed in the river of the Black Walnut Charcuterie Board. Next thing we gotta do is mix up another layer of clear epoxy and just pour that over the top. Now we're gonna wait approximately another 30 minutes or so until this starts to set up and hopefully no bubbles start coming up and hopefully it turns out great. So this black walnut project is turning out absolutely amazing. The clear epoxy is setting up perfectly. I'm not seeing any bubbles. I think it's gonna work really well. We're gonna start cleaning up the shop area for tonight. We'll come back in about five days and we'll keep working on this project. I'm really excited to see how it finishes. Our project is fully cured and we need to use this Crafted Elements mold for a product commercial. So I'm gonna take this project out of this mold and after we're done with the commercial, I may end up putting it back in the mold just to pour another thin layer of epoxy, but I don't know yet. I'm still thinking of what I'm gonna do. But taking these projects out of these crafted element silicone molds is the easiest thing to do. Because the silicone is so flexible, unlike HDPE or wood forms, it makes it very simple to remove the products from it. So all I'm gonna do is grab one side, pop it open pop open the other side, and as you can see, it's just pulling right away. And this project hasn't been taken out of this mold yet, but you can just see how simple this is. So just peeling away around the sides, and we'll do one more down here on this side. All right, so now all of our sides are completely taken out, and this, this is the best part right here. So you just peel your project right out of the form. And as you can see, it's kind of stuck in there, and you'll hear a suction sound. Boom, just like that. This is exactly why we love Crafted Elements forms so much. These silicone molds make epoxy projects so simple. I would say the biggest and scariest part about doing an epoxy project is thinking about making a mold and not having your epoxy leak out. With these silicone molds from Crafted Elements, you don't have to worry about that. It's never gonna leak. You just put your project in there, pour in the epoxy, and in five days, it's gonna be a beautiful project. So let's get this out of the way. Let's take a look at our project and see. I'm sure you can see that it looks amazing. So the thing that I'm bouncing back and forth between right now is 
do I pour epoxy over the entire thing and polish that epoxy clear, or do I just sand the wood and leave this epoxy river in the middle? I'll figure out what I'm gonna do in a little bit. All right, so we've got that black walnut project out of the mold. Um, it's got a slight hump on the backside just from where the epoxy leaked under and it caused the board to push down a little bit. So I'm gonna run this backside through the drum sander and then we'll reevaluate it from there and see what we're gonna do with the top side. As of right now, I'm thinking I'm just gonna sand the areas on the black walnut boards and then don't touch the river because the river, the bullets in the river are like right at the top line of the epoxy. I poured that bottom layer too thick. So as of right now, I think I'm just gonna sand the boards and leave the river as is. So let's go over to the drum sander and sand the bottom side. All right, so we just ran the backside of this black walnut project through the drum sander. It took all that excess epoxy and that little hump that was in the back of it off nicely. Super flat back there. Now it's time to work on this top part. Um, like I said, I poured the color, the swirl layer of epoxy in the bottom too thick. So when I put in the shell casings, they are right at the top of the wood. It looks really good the way it's sitting right now but it's preventing me from sanding down the entire top and then finishing it because if I did that, then it's gonna reveal some of those shell casings. And I don't really want any metal or any of the brass revealed. So what I think I'm gonna do is just tape off the river and then I'm gonna sand the boards on both sides of the river and then peel the tape off and hopefully the river still looks nice. Before we do that, I'm gonna go clean up the edges on the table saw and the miter saw, and then we'll work on sanding the top. So what we're gonna do is just cut a very thin layer off the end of the board, just from that excess epoxy that got around to the end grain. We're just chopping all that off. Nice clean cut on that side. Do the same thing on this side. Nice clean cut on that side. These edges actually look pretty good. There's a little bit there. Yeah, there's a little bit on each side. So we'll just clean up these edges just a hair.
right, we got all four edges nice and clean. Let's start working on this top part. So I can't find any masking tape in the shop, so I'm just gonna start with the sander and I'm gonna get kind of close to the river and try not to touch it. got one side done. I, uh, I introduced a little swirls onto the epoxy, which is fine. At the end, I can always come back and do my polishing process where I go all the way up to 3000 grit wet sanding and then break out the buffer and polish the epoxy. So we'll do that on the other side. As you can see, that worked really well on this side. This side has a lot more epoxy on the wood. So we'll switch over to this side now, try to get all that excess epoxy off and then we'll see what it looks like, but I think that's actually gonna work pretty good. I'll just buff out these little scratches right here and it'll turn out good. All right, so we got all the epoxy off that one side where it was all settled at. Um, the other side's looking great. There, there's still just a little bit of epoxy left on the wood, but it's okay. Once I sand both sides of the project up to 320, um, I'll come back and wet sand this area on the epoxy up to 3000 and then hit it with the polishing finish and polish it nice and crystal clear. So next we're gonna add a nice camphor to the edge of the board. To do that, we just gotta clamp down the board and grab our little DeWalt router. Nice camphor. Maybe they call it a chamfer. I don't know. It looks cool though. We'll just call it a little angle on the edge, a little sexy angle edge. All right, gotta do the other side now.
Dang, that looks nice. All right, so now comes the not so fun part, sanding. So I'm gonna sand the backside to maybe like 220. Yeah, probably about 220, 240. Um, and then I'll sand the top side on the wood parts. Well, I only need to go to 320, but I think I'll end up sanding part of it all the way up to the 3000 because I'll be sanding that area close to the river. So we'll sand most of the wood to 220 on the back, 320 on the top, and then we'll see how the river goes. I've got the board sanded to 320 grit. I did hit some spots on the epoxy river because they it was kind of pulled up there at that one end. So I just hit it with the sander a little bit. I'll polish it back to being crystal clear here in a second. Um, I'm gonna water pop the grain right now and this is gonna be the first time we get to see the true colors of this black walnut and the river and how dark it's gonna look here in a second. So I've got this rag, it's soaked in a little bit of water. We're just gonna water prop the grain right now so I can sand it again. Oh my goodness, that black walnut looks so pretty. Look at those colors. Let's see what the other side looks like. That is really cool. The colors in that black walnut wood are just too pretty. I see why everybody wants to work with it up north. Really wish we had some black walnut trees down here in Florida. Zoe and I are gonna be making a drive up to one of these northern states, probably like Tennessee, to go see Nathan from out of the woods. And on our way back, we're gonna bring a whole trailer full of black walnut logs. So we just water pop that grain. We'll let that dry for a little bit, and then I'll continue sanding the epoxy part up to 3000 grit and then polish it. All right, so we've sanded all the way through 3000 grit. And I was watching a video this morning on YouTube from a girl named Cass, and her company's called Stone Mill & Co. on Instagram. What she did was it actually took the polishing compound. She used, I think, Merca's polishing compound, but she took the polishing compound and she applied it to the epoxy and actually used the 3000 or the 4000 grit sandpaper to swirl that in, and that last, uh, epoxy project that she did with the shell casings and using that method with the polish it turned out beautiful so I'm gonna try that uh, process today I'm gonna use this 105 Meguiar's mirror glaze and I'm gonna apply it directly to the epoxy I'm gonna sand it with this 3000 grit sandpaper and then I'm gonna grab the DeWalt polisher and I'm gonna finish polishing this up um, once I'm done polishing it We'll just clean it up, add some Odie's oil, and this thing will be done. So the first thing I'm gonna do, shake up this Meguiar's mirror glaze real good. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit to the epoxy part. I'm just gonna rub it in. Oh, that's a little hard part right there. So we're rubbing it into the epoxy, getting all these little chunks out. And then we're gonna drop our speed down on this DeWalt sander. We'll drop it all the way down to one. And we'll just start nice and easy sanding this polishing compound. All right, so we just got done sanding that board with 3000 grit in the 105 mirror glaze polishing compound. And let me tell you, 
That works very well. Cass, if you're watching this video, thank you very much for your video and showing us how to do that because that obviously works. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same 3000 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna jump up to the 205 Meguiar's Mirror Glaze polishing compound. We'll polish that just a little bit on there and then we will grab the DeWalt polisher and finish this thing off. All right, this is our DeWalt polisher. This thing's an absolute beast. Um, I've got this blue pad here. I've also got the quick attach piece, so it just pops right on like that. Um, what we're gonna do, this is a variable speed, so it's super nice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the 105 uh, Meguiar's Mirror Glaze, and we're just gonna apply it to the uh, Epoxy River. Just smear it around with our finger. Once we got that good and spread around, we'll just take our polisher at a very slow speed at first, and we'll start working it in. Okay, looks like all of our materials gone, so we'll do the same thing. We'll just wipe off any excess material, get it good and clean, and we'll add that mirror glaze again. And we buff it again. Hit this edges real quick. Hit the other edge. All right, and that was our first coat of the McGuire's Mirror Glaze. Wipe off any excess, and just to make it that much. Clearer, we're gonna hit it with the Mirror Glaze 205. It's just a little bit finer of a polishing compound. So, same process. Put some on, mix it in, get these clumps out of there, and we work it. Turn it this way this time so you guys can get a close up view of what's happening here.
you go. We've got a beautiful black walnut epoxy river shell casing charcuterie board. This thing looks too cool. So what we'll do now is we'll wait for, we'll, we'll wipe it all down with some alcohol, wait for that to dry, and then we'll apply the Odie's oil to the wood and to the epoxy, and then we'll buff it off and it'll be finished. All right, so we're just using some alcohol to wipe down the project, get any loose sawdust or anything off. We'll go ahead and Odie's the underside first. This Odie's oil is great stuff. We, uh, we're a big fan of the company here at Triple O Rustic Designs. Uh, we actually pay for this stuff because we believe in it so much. We are not sent Odie's oil, but hopefully in the near future, we can get a partnership. It's a wonderful universal finish. Um, you just basically buff it on, let it sit there for a little bit, buff it off, and you're good to go. It works great for these epoxy projects. It's super nice on wood, but even on the epoxy, it holds a really nice shine. So we're gonna start on the back first. We'll get, make sure our sponge is nice and saturated and check out these colors. With this Odie's oil, you just use one of these 3M pads and you buff it in nice and easy. You can just buff it all around in circular motions. You can go back and forth with the grain. You just wanna get a nice, even finish across your entire project. Once the pad is saturated, it actually, the Odie's oil goes a long way. So you just gotta saturate the pad and then you only need a little bit for these projects. This is our first time ever working with this black walnut wood and it is absolutely incredible when you see these colors that come out of this thing when you apply the finish. Even that epoxy design looks pretty good there on the underside. Usually the underside doesn't have that good of a design. But that looks pretty cool. You wanna make sure you have a nice amount of this Odie's oil on the end grain here so it gets sucked into the wood. Now we're gonna let this Odie's oil set up for probably about 30 minutes or so. And then we're just gonna come back and buff it off with a cotton towel. So we've let that Odie's oil set up on the bottom side. We're just gonna buff it off with this cotton towel that's what's so nice about this Odie's oil is you just buff it on, let it sit for a little bit, and then buff it off. And with the Odie's oil, you wanna always make sure you buff off every bit of excess oil. You don't wanna leave any on there because over time it'll start gumming up if you leave it on there. So we've got it all buffed off now. That black walnut color looks so cool. We'll hit these edges real quick. I love the way the Odie's makes your projects feel after you buff it on. It's just, they have such a nice slick feeling after you put Odie's oil on it. All right, so we've got all the excess off the bottom and the sides. It's time to apply some Odie's to the top. We're only gonna apply the Odie's to the wood with the 3M pad and then we're just gonna rub some Odie's on the epoxy with our finger.
The only reason I'm applying the ODs to the epoxy with my finger instead of the 3M pad is they say the 3M pad is like scratch proof or not, it like shouldn't leave any scratches. But what I've noticed in previous projects that it really does still leave some minor scratches compared to the clarity of the epoxy once we're finished up polishing it. So from now on, I just rub the Odie's oil into the epoxy with my finger and that way it doesn't add any extra scratches that we don't want. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. As you can see, this black walnut charcuterie board turned out absolutely amazing. That was the first time ever working with black walnut, and you can see it turned out beautiful. So like I said, we got these black walnut slabs from Third Coast Hardwoods. They're down in Bradenton, Sarasota, Florida. I will put a link to their contact information in the description below. Um, if you guys like this video, as always, I ask that you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified every time a video comes out. Also drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you want to see next. Um, I keep doing these shell casing bullet projects. This time I added these SWAT coins, but I wanna try something different. I'm thinking maybe like some barber shop tools, some fishing lures, something like that. Drop your comment in the comment section below and we'll see if I can make it next time. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.